bit of plastic surgery will do for destructive a little bit like the mother-in-law actually oh dear kilohertz and eric go through next up centurion splint and small talk ready to rip it up in the melee the centurion team they've got 15 tons of downward pressure from that axe pretty scary and uplift at the front how much force is that 120 kilograms of lift at the front about 18 stone. Absolutely. So you could get kill a lot over, uh, up and mm, over. We hope. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Bulletproof uh, body work there. Ferocious looking beast. Splinter, this is the ex Ivanhoe team. They didn't make it in the last wars because they were underweight, but they're back for more vengeance. Padded yourselves out a bit, haven't you? Yes, yeah, and it's a lot faster this war. Yeah. Excellent. They're a sort of scooper and then a crusher to give you a lovely cuddle if you're not looking. And from Edinburgh, the small talk team. They've got a special cooling device in here, which we don't see often. It's basically an ongoing fire extinguisher pumping CO2 around, cooling things down. So they should be all right if they're on the pits. 4,000 RPM of that blade there. Nasty, that's twice as fast as Hypnodis, but it is smaller. And uh, Alex has got a message. He's going to tell us his game plan. I'm going to team up with Splinter and defeat Centurion. Ooh, conspiring. But really, it is every man for himself in the melee, and may the best bot win. From Norwich, Splinter. A father and son team who fought in the second series back with a completely changed robot, wheelchair motor power, crusher scooper, welded steel frame. It's the heaviest in the heat. In series two, they were knocked out by GBH in their previous incarnation as Ivanhoe. Just look how primitive the robots were two series ago compared to these days. GBH got in underneath Ivanhoe too high ground clearance really and rolled them. Stuart and Craig over and out for them. This is my dad Stuart and I'm Craig. This is our robot Splinter and together we make Team Ivanhoe. Yeah, um, Splinter's uh, got very high traction tires here and it's powered by two Bosch motors. The main weapon is these two arms here powered by wheelchair motors. They're quite powerful, and the idea is to get under the other robots and grab hold of them, chop them, and ram them into the side wall. From Edinburgh, small talk. Sharp teeth, a spinning disc, a bulletproof plastic shell, top speeds of 20 miles an hour. I mean, this is the talk of the pit. Idle gossip, small talk, or will the chatter fox all opponents up? series they were knocked out by the thing in the second round nowadays they have a special cooling system it could be essential they took a buffeting and a bashing from the thing and from the house robots that wasn't the problem see the smoke there they had some sort of internal fire which KO'd them in the end the special cooling system may prevent that this time around they may go further let's hope so for small talk Hi, I'm Richie, this is Alex, and this is Martin, and we're the team Small Talk. Uh, we've been in the last two wars. Uh, we've come back this year with a plastic machine. We've got a bigger disc that goes around, about 4,000 RPM, should do a lot of damage. We can be flipped and still run around. Um, and if that happens, the disc will drag us along even faster. So hopefully we'll have a good fight and do some damage and get through to the final. From Dagenham in Essex and seated number 31. Centurion. Capable of roaming around the arena, powered by two industrial motors, the pneumatic axe and front lifter can destroy legions. But in the last series, they fiddled while their hopes burnt. They were knocked out by 101 Centurion. The axe not in play. The front lifters hauled 101 off the arena floor. So they didn't follow up that attack. 101. Push them against the arena sidewall, in came the house robots, and kill a lot, truncating the hopes of Centurion. Hi, my name's Ray Tight, this is my brother Matt, and this is our friend here, Jeff Bradford. This is our robot, Centurion. She's powered by uh, two 750 watt industrial motors. We've got a nasty axe on the back here, producing damage, producing a force of about 15 tonnes. We've got a nice set of lifting forks on the front here that give us well over a nice two foot lift, powered by an 80 millimetre cylinder, producing about half a ton of force there. Roboteers, stand by. The front scoop of splinter there, Stuart and Craig Waitman. There's small talk, little Alex in the middle, only eight. And Centurion, Ray Tate, the captain of the controls. Three, two, one, activate. 
obviously great an alarm technician by trade now alarm bells ringing for Centurion at the moment and on the attack on Splinter straight away now you can see the sort of crushing arms of Splinter coming out trying to pinch Centurion and in slam small talk with a very impressive movement there a great power drive the arms of Splinter go back in there's Centurion trying to flip small talk up in the air very unusual looking a robot splinter. It's combined a scoop and also sort of pickaxe weapons there. We haven't seen it before. Attacking small talk. Centurion standing idle. Is it too idle, I wonder? Well, the uh, flipper. Oh no, it's okay. The flipper was working. They're off and running now, Centurion. Down comes the axe. No great power on that Centurion axe though. 15 tons of power. I don't think so. Not what we've seen. Splinter grapples small talk. Now you can see why we do have the pincers in the scoop and in towards Shunt and the Great Axe Blow penetrates the so-called bulletproof plastic shell of Small Talk away and nippy Small Talk up to 20 miles an hour. It's a quick robot across the arena floor. Dead Metal comes out a little bit of a pinch. Ooh, tight. Down comes a circular saw of Dead Metal spinning. Splinter think they've obviously done enough to go through. Centurion Seriously sluggish, immobile throughout, really. I don't know what the judges will have made it if it goes to the judges, but uh, they've hardly moved Centurion. I don't know whether the Tate brothers have got a problem there with the controls, the 750 watt industrial motors. Kill a lot there on the left hand side. And Centurion, our seated robot here, number 31, sees thrash and kill a lot, says the message. Centurion about to be thrashed and smashed, crashed into the pit any second now. Well, that's an upset. Go the number 31 seed Centurion. And in the great gladiatorial Roman Wars Coliseum, the thumbs go down for the Roman Centurion. Centurion immobilized. Splinter and small talk through to the next round. man for themselves and it was but did you know that the other two teams were planning on ganging up on you no <laughs> not really no we no. do now <laughs> but they didn't really it was the house robots that ganged up on you it was indeed yeah yeah i think because in the previous wars we did have a little go at bash and we think they were trying to get their revenge back on us and matilda wasn't happy either was she no not really no no but no. they can't do that unless you're immobilized that's right and so were you yes we was it was very sad we was going quite well and the problem was we lost drive and jeffy has done a diagnosis check and he's found an autopsy an autopsy if you like yeah, we've got a, a safety device which is built into the unit or has to be built into the unit and the pins actually sheared and uh, caused us to lose power and of course we we were dead in the water dead that's ducks. electronics for you isn't it yes the tiniest thing makes all the difference on robot wars we were sitting ducks <laughs> mm, so the centurion crash splinter and small talk go through along with kilohertz and eric let's see how they line up then well, Kilohertz, seated number 16, meets Splinter, and Small Talk against Eric. That'll be an interesting one.